Hey, welcome back everybody. In this project video, we're gonna build a guitar strap. We've made a get, uh, guitar straps like this in the shop for many years, and uh, the old pattern that I had was just a little bit different shape, and I finally came up with a pattern that I liked, and we thought we'd do a, go ahead and do a project video on this. This is gonna be much like the gun slings. There's not a whole lot to it as far as building these. They're pretty close to just building a belt, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make these. We're gonna do two of them in the video. This one here we did unlined, so it's just a piece of nine, 10 ounce uh, Herman Oak skirting leather, and this one here is a piece of six ounce Herman Oak skirting leather lined with a piece of three, four. And that gives us a guitar strap that finishes out to around 10 ounce, um, somewhere around there. And I think that's a really good weight for a guitar strap. I have seen them lighter, much lighter, and I've also seen them heavier. And uh, it's just kind of a personal preference. So you can decide on how heavy or how light you want yours. But let's go ahead and hop into the video. I'm gonna show you how to make one of these real quick. Okay, so we've got our guitar straps cut out. I cut out two of them. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna make two of these in this video. The first one I cut out, I'm just gonna do it single ply. So you can certainly make these just single ply leather. We pulled down both of these. I need to pull this one down still, but we're gonna pull down the down straps uh, to about, they need to be somewhere around six ounce, somewhere around there, six, seven, five, six, something like that, because this has to weave through these little slots that we're gonna add to the guitar strap when it's done. So you wanna have that be kind of soft and limber. Now you can cut these out of just chap leather and then cut two pieces or cut one out and then line it with another piece of chap leather and sew it. That's what we used to use on all of them and so that works out really well too. But on these, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna use a piece of six ounce Herman Oak leather. Uh, we'll oil it up. It'll make a really nice down strap and be able to weave through those slots. As far as the body of the strap, we're gonna keep it 910. I think that's plenty heavy for a guitar strap. You can floral tool this, you can basket stamp it, you can do whatever, whatever you want to with it and not have to line it, not have to sew it or anything. And it'll make a really nice soft guitar strap that'll work really, really well. On the second one, we're gonna go ahead and line that. And so if you're gonna line it, I wanna do that so you can see kind of two versions. But if you are gonna line them, then I suggest using a five to six ounce leather for the body of the guitar strap, maybe even a six, seven, somewhere around there. You just want it to be a little bit lighter because we're gonna add the three, four liner to it or a four ounce chap leather, whichever you wanna use. So as far as all these weights, you can vary this weight however you want to or however the customer wants their strap. Some people want them a little heavier and a little bit more sturdy. Some people just want them really light and flimsy and soft. I've seen straps like this cut out of just a single piece of uh, chap leather, not lined, not stitched, not nothing, just a single piece of chap leather. That's fine too, you can adjust that however you want. But on the lined one that we're gonna do in this video, this one is about six ounce, somewhere around there, five to six ounce, and then I'm lining it with a piece of three, four, Herman Oak Veg Tan as well. That's gonna basically finish out like a lighter belt um, and it's gonna it'll kinda like our gunslings as well. So it'll make a really nice guitar strap. Now, uh, one real quick tip, once you get your pieces cut out, before you start tooling or laying out any artwork, in the pattern pack, if you've got that, there is some, uh, there's five different tooling panels in there. Um, I also show you kind of where you should lay out any kind of name or brand so that it shows right here on the front of the guitar strap when it's being used. But what I would do is before you do any artwork is take your pattern and go ahead and mark all these slots, these bag punches on the back side of the strap just so that you know where they are so you'll stop your tooling uh, before you get there because we will punch those out at the very end once we get it all put together. So you want to kind of do any kind of hole marking. Um, the holes on this one, I'll just wait to the end on that because I don't normally tool the down straps. So we're not worried about that right now. But before you tool the main body, mark off your bag punches 
mark off this end um, and then that way at least you know where your slots are going to go and all your holes need to be and you don't tool over that and have to punch through tooling. And so now we've done that so what we'll do is go ahead and prep these for tooling. I'm going to add blue painters tape like I always do on everything that I tool. You can use whatever you want to use there uh, for that purpose and I'm going to tape the back of both of these mainly just where the tooling is going to be. You don't have to tape the entire thing uh, down here but I'm going to go ahead and tape where the tooling is going to go and that way they don't stretch whenever we tool them. If you don't do that, if, if you got a good sturdy piece of leather it's not going to hurt anything. Um, th this isn't have to, having to fit any other piece so if it does stretch a little it's not that big of a problem. But we're going to go ahead and tape these, get these ready for tooling and then we'll get that done, show you a little bit of that and then we'll move on to putting these together. So this is the pattern pack for this video. And uh, if you'd like to purchase one of these, they are on our website. You can find a link down in the description. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tool this, this last pattern right here. There's five different patterns in this, uh, for, in this pack. So you can make five different styles of guitar straps. You can change the flowers, change them up, do whatever you wanna do. Um, I have left in a bunch of these, like we talked about, I left a little spot in there for names initials brand something like that you can, you can go ahead and fit that in there but i'm going to tool this bottom one here um, and go ahead and tool this pattern so what i'm going to do is i'm going to transfer that we've talked about in other videos how to transfer patterns how to kind of go go from there if you're making a lot of guitar straps and you want to use some of these patterns it would probably be really beneficial to go ahead and create a tap off it's going to be an expensive tap off because you're basically using an entire uh guitar strap you could have turned into an actual strap but it would be worth it if you're going to tool a pattern repetitively but for this this one here i'm going to go ahead and just use one of the patterns out of the pack i'm going to use some mylar or some transfer film i'm going to trace all these lines out for this last pattern here and then we'll transfer that to one of the straps the other strap i'm going to go ahead and just do like a border or some geometric something simple because what we're just trying to show you is one lined and one unlined so we'll go ahead and get this traced off and then i'll go ahead and trace it i'll do the same thing trace it onto the wet leather and transfer that pattern and we'll be ready to tool that one and get it going Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, gotten a guitar strap here. I'm gonna full, I'm gonna floral tool the one that we're gonna line, just because it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit more elaborate guitar strap with that liner in there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We've got our pattern traced off. Now you can certainly flip the pattern if you'd like, and then use the pencil method like I've shown in another video, where it'll transfer the lead to the to the leather. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it with a stylus on. Um, kind of semi cased up leather just to kind of show that process just a little bit um, but i'm just going to lay this template on here that we've made and we're going to begin to do the same thing we did on the paper now we're going to do it on the leather and i'm just using the stylus is all i'm using you can certainly use a pencil or anything else but we're just going to come in here and just retrace all these lines be sure your pattern stays straight on the leather um, one trick is once you kind of mist that leather down a little bit with water. Let it set for a few minutes to, to begin to dry out. Don't just stick this tracing film or mylar or whatever you're using directly on that leather with it being that wet. Because sometimes that stuff will start to bow up on you or kind of warp a little bit. So I always like to let it just kind of sit there and, and dry out just a little bit. And then we'll transfer, we'll put it on there and then do it um, with that leather a little bit drier. That's just gonna help your transfer paper. But we'll go ahead and get all these lines traced again. All right, so our pattern's transferred, we're ready to go. So now all our impressions are on there. Now we'll go ahead and case it up really good and get it ready for actual carving. And we'll go ahead and get it carved and tooled. And then we'll be ready to go ahead and do the other one as well. So we start putting these together.
So we got the tooling done as well as the two toning on this one, as you saw, just showed you a little bit of that. We do have videos uh, on our channel on both the two toning, as far as how to do that die work, as well as on tooling. There's a lot of videos on tooling. So we didn't show you too much of that, but we did tool one of the patterns out of the pattern pack here. And then I went ahead and oiled it and antiqued it. Again, we've got a video on our channel that shows you our antiquing process. So to keep the video short, we went ahead and did all that off camera. We've got this one ready to go. The single ply one is still soaking up a little bit of oil over there. And then we'll go ahead and put that one together whenever we get this one sewn up. So first thing, this is the one that we're gonna line. So like I said, I'm doing two of them in this video. So you can either do it out of 910 unlined or go ahead and get you like some five to seven ounce, somewhere around there, and then line it with a piece of three, four, or a piece of four ounce chap leather, whatever you wanna line it with. I've got a piece of three, four ounce Herman Oak skirting leather right here that we'll go ahead and use to line this one with. I did cut it oversized like I do everything. Like I said, I always recommend cutting your liners out a little bit bigger than the actual body of whatever you're making. That way you have something to trim to because if you cut them out the exact same size, they're gonna stretch a little bit after tooling, then they may not fit your liner. So be sure and do that. But we'll go ahead and put two coats of, of glue on both of these pieces of leather. We're gonna put one coat on, let it set for a little bit and get tacky, come back and put a second coat, then we'll glue these up and we'll be ready to get them ready to go to the stitching machine. And I'm just using my uh, Weldwood contact cement. Like I said, you can use barges or masters, whatever glue that you like to use. Um, but I find that just the regular old contact cement from Lowe's or Home Depot works just as good as anything else I've used. And so that's what we use here in the shop. All right, so our glue has had time to dry, and so it's nice and tacky. We did do two coats on here. So remember, when you glue stuff up, especially something like this, it's kind of wide, and uh, and you wanna go ahead and put two coats on there, let them dry real good in between coats until they're tacky, and then put the next coat on there. That's just gonna ensure that your liner doesn't separate from the body of the material of whatever item that you're making. So I almost always will do two coats. And then we'll go ahead and just line this up and glue this onto the liner, give it a good mash, and then we'll go ahead and tap it in place here. Always like to, to tap everything together with a, with a nice flat hammer, and that way you get a good bond between the two layers with that glue, and uh, that way your liner doesn't come loose when we're sewing it on the machine. So now we'll take our Horseshoe brand um, Groover. This is a Horseshoe brand. You can get this at Weaver Leather. You can also call Jeremiah Watt Tools and get one from him. Um, I get a lot of people asking what dividers these are or what Groover this is. This is a Horseshoe brand Groover. I've mentioned it in other videos as well, but go ahead and mention it again just so everybody knows because I know I'll get questions on what kind of groover this is. There's some other groovers out there too. There's a Versa groover. Um, I also have one of the Tandy's upper level version. Um, I'm assuming they still make it. I bought it years ago and it actually works really good. I usually use it on belts and things like that. But on this, we're gonna go ahead and leave a, a, a little bit better quality groove with this one. And uh, that way those stitches are nice and inset there into the leather and we'll just set it down and we'll just groove all the way around the piece so we can get it stitched. Okay, so as you can see there, we've got that uh, groove line all the way around there. You don't necessarily have to do that every time you run stitches. I think it makes it nicer. If you're making this out of chaff leather or something like that, another type of leather, it may not groove very well. So just try it on a piece of scrap. If it doesn't groove, just sew it up. It's not mandatory, but when you're working with veg tan leather, harness leather, latigo, things like that, the grooving comes from the saddle making side of things. We really like to groove anywhere we're gonna stitch. That way those stitches are down below the top layer of the leather. That way they don't get rubbed off. This is a guitar strap. It's not gonna get abused. I just like the way it looks, so I go ahead and groove everything. But other than that, this is ready to stitch, so we're gonna go ahead and carry it over here to the sewing machine and sew this up right quick.
All right, so we're all stitched up, and so now we'll just trim off our stitches. Like I said, you can pull them, you can pull your, both your threads through the back if you want, and then tie them off and burn them, or just cut them flush and burn them. I usually just cut them flush wherever they are. And then you wanna just take a knife or a sharp razor blade and just trim off all of this feather. All right, so now that's all trimmed up. And so now we'll do all our sanding, edging, and slicking just like you would on a belt, just like we've done in other videos. We're just gonna sand this up and then we'll go ahead and uh, edge it and slick it, let those edges dry, then go ahead and dye them. Again, I just use five beans dye, just regular oil based dye or pro dye on my edges. You can use whatever you want. Um, and we'll do the same thing to the, uh, the single ply one that we did that's oiling. We'll finish up the oiling on that and then we'll sand and edge and slick both of these plus the down straps. Also have those oiling too. And then we'll be pretty much done with the guitar straps. We'll be ready to punch our slots in here and, um, and get them wrapped up. Okay, so we've got the line one sanded. It's ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and edge all of our pieces. This one here that we're doing, this just I just did a little border stamp on it. It's single ply. I'm gonna go ahead and edge it as well. It's still soaking in a little bit of oil. We're gonna let this float out overnight. Now we can get it nice and even. And then I've got both of my down straps. Um, when you do these, I would recommend, if you're gonna do them out of veg tan leather, uh, say around a six, eight out, somewhere around there, uh, I would go ahead and put oil on them, but put light coats and work your way up if you're going for a pretty dark finish because I have had these where they'll get really dark around the edge and then they'll stay light in the middle. You've got to go a little darker than you wanted to. So I would do very light coats on those front and back and then just work your way up coat by coat until you get them to the color you want. But we're going to use a number three Ron's edger on these. Um, usually that's what I use for belts, stuff that's this way, 10 ounce, 10 to 12 ounce. I usually use a number three edger. It doesn't matter what brand use whatever brand you have but a number three is usually enough three to four um, would work fine on stuff like this but we're going to go ahead and edge all these pieces and then start to get them all slicked up and then we'll let all those edges dry and that way we can dye them all Now I'm just slicking these just as we normally would on any other project with just glycerin and water. There's a lot of good slicking uh, compounds out there, slicking remedies that people use and different things. Try them all, pick out the ones that works for you. The uh, glycerin and water is just something that's always worked for me. We do use that Martin's Mix, which is a, uh, it's just a little slicking fluid uh, that you can use. It works really, really good, um, but old habits die hard and I just, still kind of prefer my my glycerin and water and so that's what we're using on these we do have a video showing how to do this you can find that edge slicking video and just kind of see how i do it but it's not that complicated this is pretty much it just put some water on your edge and then rub a little bit of that glycerin bar on there and then rub it with your canvas rag but we'll go ahead and get all of these pieces slicked here and then we'll let those edges dry real good and we'll be ready to dime All right, so we've got our pattern out and now what we're gonna do is go ahead and mark all of our slots and all of our holes. Now this is a one inch oblong punch or a one inch bag slot is what you're gonna need. If you're, you can do the double hole and then cut the center out in between the two holes if you want to, but if you're gonna make a few of these, I suggest investing in a good quality one inch bag punch or oblong punch. That's gonna make this process a lot easier and a lot cleaner. We'll go ahead and get all of those marked on all four pieces and then we'll go to the punch bench and punch those out.
And here I'm just going to take a number 10 hole punch and we're going to drive uh, a number 10 there. That's going to fit over that peg really well on a guitar that holds the strap. And then I'm going to do a number two or a number four. Either size is fine, but this is just a stress hole here that you'll cut a slot in between these two, as you'll see in a minute. But um, it's much like we do on like a pair of uh, spur leathers or anything like that. And so here we're just gonna go ahead and punch our one inch bag punch there for the down strap. And then we'll do the same type of hole system that we did on the point of the guitar strap. We'll do those on this down strap as well. But you'll notice in the pattern, there's two sets of those. That's what I call a quick adjustment. Um, if somebody gets it adjusted, they can go from the bottom one or the top one if they want their guitar up a little higher uh, for some reason, uh, kind of in the moment, they don't wanna have to unweave that. It makes for a really fast adjustment. And so now here you'll just take a nice sharp blade and just cut a, a nice straight line in between those two holes. And like I said, it's gonna work much like it does on a spur strap. It's just gonna allow that thing to stay in place, but also get on the peg. And then once it's on the peg, it'll hold it, hold it in place very securely. On the line guitar strap, I felt it needed to have these uh, bag slots edged on the back side of them because it's just a little heavier material and they seemed a little bit too closed um, for me on the back side. So we went ahead and edged those with a, a nice round edger. Um, that's gonna do a good job of edging those bag slots. It's not a necessary step, but I think it makes, a, a, makes it a lot easier for that strap to go in and out of that bag punch since it's a little bit tighter on the back side or the exit side of that slot. So we went ahead and edged those. I don't end up doing it on the unlined one because it didn't seem necessary. Those those uh, openings were fine and the, and the strap seemed to go through there just fine. So now we'll take the down strap and it's real simple. You can weave these however you'd like to, but you initially just go up wherever you want it as far as on that rail of, of slots there and then go up out, out of one hole and then down through and through the tab at the top of that down strap. And this just secures the strap in place on the guitar strap at whatever position you need it in. And then you can just take that tail and weave that however you would like to through the remaining slots. And uh, I like to have mine coming at the end down through the back side of the guitar strap. I think it looks nicer. But that's all you're doing. You're just securing that strap in place depending on the length that you want the guitar strap. All right guys, so that's our guitar strap. Like I said, this spot back here, this adds for a lot of adjustment. So you can adjust this thing. You can put the anchor point of this down strap here on the very end. If you get somebody, whoever's gonna be using it is really large or if they've got, um, depending on where they like to hold their guitar. Some people like it higher, some people like it lower. Sometimes they're, they're using when they're sitting on a stool, that kind of deal. So it just kind of depends. It's got a lot of adjustment. You also have the, these two uh, different adjustments here, which I just kind of reference as, as uh, quick adjustments there because they can either mount the guitar on this one or on this one and it moves it by that much pretty quickly um, on the fly but as you can see there's not a lot to them uh, you've got a lot of room on these things for a lot of artwork um, and so you can have a lot of fun with them you can put a lot of different things on them and guitar straps are kind of like belts there's no telling what kind of request you may get 
um, people can kind of get as, as personalized as they want to on them and you've got plenty of room to do that artwork. Now, if you're interested in, in making one of these and you'd like to purchase our pattern pack that goes along with this video, then you can certainly do that. There's links down in the description and you can get either version. There's a digital version, which you actually get the digital download PDF file. And then you're gonna have to take that somewhere and have that printed because this is a really large pattern as you saw in the video. The, pa the paper that it prints out on is three foot by four foot. That's to be able to get all of this on that one sheet of paper and so that can be cumbersome so if you are in the United States we recommend that you buy the printed version which is this right here and we will mail this out to you um, so if you're but if you're outside the United States we don't ship internationally then you can certainly buy the digital version and take it somewhere and have it printed if you like there's five different tooling patterns in here floral tooling patterns as you saw and uh, we did uh, most of them they have a space in there for either names or initials or a brand or a logo or something like that but I'm pretty proud of this pattern pack I think it's it's really good. It's a really good item that you can make some money on. You can even make these out of uh, just chap leather. You can just double them up and, and line them two pieces of chap leather together, different colors, different textures and grains, and they'll sell really well. If you go to a lot of like trade shows or little market days or something like that, make up just two or three of these and hang them in your booth. I guarantee you somebody's going to walk by and be interested in that because guitar straps are kind of like belts or anything else. You can't have enough of them and you see one that you like, go ahead and pick it up. But I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see y'all in the next project video.